Hello, everybody. Please uh, take your seats. Welcome to a very special uh, master class, another master class in our series of the master classes. And uh, today I'm so happy to introduce you a uh, special master class. I mean, every master class is special, but for me personally, this is uh, twice special because the person who introduced was a student here at Keshet Ilon in early 90s. Yes, and look what happened to him. Yes. Today he is doing a really world-class uh, career, and it's always uh, happy and a privilege for me to introduce our, our professor of Keshet Ilon, Vadim Gluzman. Hello, Nikulam. Hello, everybody. Uh, we will start with a little bit unusual introduction to the, to the class. You, you may see in your programs that today's masterclass is dedicated to the memory of our head archery coach, uh, Fimo Hayutin, whom we sadly lost last year. Uh, he loved when pieces were dedicated to friends' honor. So in his honor, Yulia and I will play Gluck's melody in Chrysler's arrangement.
first talk is just because we don't have much time, I thought it would be more, more productive. Uh, it would be great if we could have a stand on, on stage. Uh, beautiful thing. Uh, I heard you yesterday, and you were less nervous. You were much more in the, in the driver's seat. Good. Uh, many good things, many more good things than yesterday. So there is obvious, obvious progress already. Uh, there are a couple of things that I need to talk about um, with Prokofiev in particular, and in general, and the, this concerto in particular. Uh, in one of his letters, he writes that he, the word he hates the most is interpretation. Uh, we maybe should take it with some grain, grain of salt, uh, but I think it is, it, it, it's, a, it's a very interesting sign for us that he expects uh, the performer to be true to the score. To, at least to a good degree. Yeah, I feel that uh, your general attitude towards tempo is, to my taste, much, much too free. Uh, basically, basically, if, if I were to uh, hear this piece for the first time in your version, I would have made a uh, note to myself, that's a concerto for a Cilerando in orchestra. Uh, there is a constant feeling of changing tempo. You are, your, your pedal of gas is constantly being pushed more and more and more and more and more and more and more, no matter what is the situation. It is, you change tempo and immediately start moving it. You start the piece and you start to begin to move. Uh, if we look at what he writes, I will save, save you time. The very first Achirando he writes, is here. By this point, you have been uh, accelerating for a good while, and then there was a big jump here. By the time we got to Piumoso, uh we had a little bit of, of Tom and Jerry situation. Um, your first Cilerando that you took was already in the first eight bars. You started in one tempo, you ended the first sentence in completely different tempo. Um, I want you to start once again. I will, I will poke you from, from time to time. Very good, let's stop. Let's start from here in this tempo. From here? From this pickup. Pa, pa, ping, pa, pom. Now, of course, this, is, this, is, this would be irrational to play it so slowly. Maybe consider that this is just as irrational to play it in this tempo. Uh, if we look, you don't have the second movement here. No. No. Uh, it's very interesting to, to see his markings, uh, of his tempo markings. We, we have second movement here. Yes. May I? I think it's fascinating. Prokofiev writes 108 per, per, per um, minute in, in per quarter notes in the first movement, and the same tempo for eight notes in the, in the second. I can't believe this is an accident. He must be thinking of something. So pulsation as such, I think, is, is incredibly important for overall structure of the piece, and of course for, for the moon in itself. I'm not asking for 108 or 174. I, couldn't care less about the numbers. But I think the, the, the heartbeat needs to be constant. So let's try to find one tempo, at least for our opening, what is it, eight, eight, 24 bars. So if you were playing pa -ping, pa -pam, pa -ping, pa -dum -ping, that was more or less the tempo. Maybe that's what we are looking for in the beginning. And then we don't need to speed up. Okay. Let's try it.
now hold the tempo. It's not an easy beginning. No. You are alone. You have to start with a particular uh, atmosphere. It's very difficult. If you, on top of it, make it slower, you are putting yourself in a corner. Okay. It becomes it becomes a problem. Uh, I felt this. It, it had much more flow. It had a sense of direction of where we, where you are going. Uh, be uh, uh, very brave about those those octaves. As many times as, as we practice them at home. When you're on stage, it becomes scary, yeah. naturally. Yeah. Uh, make sure that you're helping yourself by, by balancing it towards the lower string. Okay. This, the, 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 top the top string will ring simply because it is so high, uh, no matter how light it is. But if you, if you give us a, a, lot of, a lot of attention to the bass, the, the intonation will, will seem to, to improve. I want to now connect to the next tempo, poco più mosso. Yeah, it is, it is not a new tempo per se. It's a little bit faster. Yeah, it, what he's looking for, he is like most Russian composers. Uh, he's essentially a theater composer. And everything he writes is incredibly characteristic. Yeah, there is a character behind every scene. He's writing this at the same time as he's writing Romeo and Juliet. I don't have a, a, a documental confirmation but I, I'm sure that the, 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 we have here loose change odif from from uh, what he did not use in the ballet. The the all the, the main theme of the second movement. If this is not pas de deux, then I, I don't know what is pas de deux. Yeah, or or the second subject of of, of this movement. It's absolutely dance music. The the point is that we need to be able to switch characters, and not necessarily by changing tempo dramatically. Yeah, we have to be actors, dancers, singers, whatever, whatever it is, not just violinists. Can we take maybe from uh, exactly? Yeah. Remember the tempo we played. And when you come to Poco Pianoso, do move, of course, but move just a little bit, just enough to get to get the sparkle and the, the the very mechanical kind of articulation. This is his favorite game to 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 oppose. Lyricism, the at most lyricism, to almost acidic kind of kind of motion of, of this mechanical. Try from from <laughs> Dodi's Minor. <laughs> have a little bit more of a biting character rather than a little bit l higher elbow uh, uh, try to be above the ground you play with no shoulders you you have no no excuse a little get your elbow to do g string and make sure that your your fingers are really controlling the bow try it. it's, it's straight from piano you, you have a partner. Yeah. Sorry. A little. <sighs> now, when you get to detaché, make sure that you open your hand immediately. Yeah, I want to hear the, the change of, 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 of stroke right away. Once again, same place. Yeah. 
Very good. What instrument is playing with you? Po, 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 po. Um, I think uh, piano and bass. You shouldn't think, you should know. Okay. Uh, it's double bass pizzicato and gran casa, the big, big drum. This, the sound is very thick and very low. Yeah, it's rather round. It's, 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 not a, uh, it's not as sharp articulation as it is on the piano. There is no other way. Uh, you need to be able to be noticed. So this kind of articulation will not work. We need a little bit of bite to the string. I'm not, I'm not asking for accents, not asking for, for anything aggressive, but just enough to create a contrast of, of articulation between the, the basses and, and, and Gran Casa. Yeah, try it. it, it basically, ev every down bow from the string. A little bit of, of uh, pronation on, on in, in the string. But I want to hear all the notes. softer what is your immediate physical reaction what what do you do you think you, you have to go down in dynamic um, less, pressure. less pressure anything else I would I would love if you took out word pressure from your dictionary completely in, in regards to violin playing in exchange it with weight we have more than enough weight for, for playing violin small instrument Anything else? I think maybe more bold. Yes, that would be fantastic. Why don't you? <laughs> you do the opposite. You release the contact t too much to my taste. And we'll, we'll, since we are already out of time, uh, we'll, we'll move to the second subject, uh, where is the, the similar situation. Yes, we, of course, use less weight on the string. We, we don't need so much. But we cannot do two, we should not do two things. We can, but we shouldn't. We should not lose contact between the hair and the string. No matter how softly you want to play, you have to produce vibration of the string. Yeah? You are lifting the, the, the weight, the, the, the bow from the string much too much. It does not produce sound properly. And the lighter you play, the faster the bow should. Yeah, otherwise your, your sound will be falling to your feet, which it does very successfully. Yeah, let's, let's try to send it, send it into, into the hole. Let's, let's start from the second subject. Okay. Wonderful, wonderful. What I heard now was I would like, to, it was much better than what you did before. I want at the same time very even bow speed. Yeah, not slower and faster and slower. Very, very, very even, very calm. Once again, you heard it now, yeah? Uh, s since we stopped again, what is our phrasing? Is it Is it or or the third option? Fine. You know why? Why, why I was asking? Exactly. Exactly. Now, there, there is no right or wrong. Mm -hmm. I just need to know what is it you are saying. Do it once again and care. Move the bow, move, move, move. Wonderful. And just a quick question for you. Uh, much, much better. When we go from D to E flat, is this a relaxed uh, interval or there is tension to it? I think there's pressure, but the E, I think, is a release. Is a release. Uh, if the E if e flat is a release, then there is no, no tension. I, I, I think it's a mistake. Okay. And what is incredible, he's writing D 
D-sharp, radius, the Mi bemol is changing the harmony on, on, on a dime. It's, it's, a, it's a miracle of a moment. I, I, would, I, I would want them to notice it. You keep it for yourself. I think it's egoistic. Um, let's take it from here. Is there a, a, any indication of, of physical accelerando? Is there a word accelerando or stringendo? No. It is traditional to, 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 to speed up here. I disagree with all, all I have within me. I think it is dishonest to come to, to the composer. Also, it really is, is damaging to what is, what is coming. I would urge you really to, to stay in the same tempo. Let's take it from here, the one bar before eight. And see what happens if you, if you take it as a melody and not as fast. Sorry, just one bar before that. No, let's not, let's, it's a continuation. Do not prepare anything, nothing is happening there. It's actually beautiful music, I think. Uh, if, if you pay attention here, he does not write staccato like we are used to hearing right here, yeah? There is nothing, he, opposite, he's writing tenuto. And we, of course, know better. We play staccato because it's comfortable. No, we, I, I think it's much more fun when, when, when we're actually looking at what's written. Let's go from here. <laughs> I would not play it any faster than this. I would use seven times more bow. You are against, against, I, I emphasize against, a massive orchestra at this point. You may be over orchestrated. Yeah, but you, you need to be realistic. Last point. What does he say here? I, 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 I know, I know, I know. Tempo prima. What did you do here? Why? And then what does he, what does he say here? No, it's the same tempo. In the same tempo. What did you do? Then, okay, give me a reason why was this, this was all happening. Recordings that you've heard. I guess so. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's a very typical thing that we all do, myself included. It, it, it's normal, we are influenced. And it's wonderful to be influenced. But when we're influenced, it, it's even more wonderful to ask why. I would, uh, let's, let's hear what happens if we start tempo primo. In. <laughs> And then do not change the tempo. Just stay. Let, let's try tempo primo in, in, in tempo primo actually. Isn't it easier to play? No, 
much easier. Of course it is much easier. He, he, he was not a violinist, but he knew what he was doing. He was an educated person. Then look what he's writing. Pochissimo. We know what pochissimo is. The most. Ancora un poco più mos. What happened when you played? You played this slow, and then you played the whole page twice, fast. Really, nothing happened. The incredible anxiety of this of this development section, which is written in in, in uh, variation segments, one more intense than the other. You you really become mad, and then you go in, into C major, and, and you know sky opens in a completely different picture again. You erased all, all of all of the characters just because you didn't manage the, the tempo. It's not about violin playing. As you see, your violin playing becomes better when you actually read. What, what is written, yeah? I would very strongly encourage to forget what you've heard in, in terms of interpretation and go to the score. Download yourself uh, an orchestra score. Look what instruments are playing together with you. Learn the score. You will make many decisions differently when you are informed. Yeah, it, is, it is absolutely crucial. It's not about, uh, we don't know when you will be able to play with this with, with an orchestra. But even when you're playing this with, with the piano, music is different when, when you make decisions based on reality and not on fantasy. Okay? Beautiful. Thank <laughs> you. 
you have a lot to say um, and I want you to know what are you saying uh, I think this is this this, this is the, the, the in your case this is the most the most important thing uh, we could discuss uh, this way or that way or, or this way or this way maybe not in the master class situation I would like to talk about Sibelius um, and how do you look at the, at the score is this the score yeah. 20, 21st century. Not only we're, we're watched all over the world, we're, we're also looking at the, at the iPad. And Good. The piano score? No, this is, this is, this is fine. Uh, what is your dynamic uh, at the beginning of the movement? <laughs> and no, not this way, no. <laughs> I think piano. I abso absolutely disagree with you. <laughs> Mezzo forte. Mezzo forte. Uh, we know that this is a, 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 a second version of this piece. You, if you were here last night, you would have known it because uh, Professor Rashkovsky talked about it at, at length. He must have given it some thought. Yeah, he, he must have thought what he was doing. And look at this. It's a minor letter. Is that a pleasant situation? No. This is, this is immediate tension. I know there is a long tradition of, of starting this concerto, or this uh, pianissimo, dreamy in the distance. It's beautiful, I, I, I'm not going to argue, but it has nothing to do with what is written by Sibelius. Uh, I, I think we should, we should maybe at least give him a chance. Yeah, yeah since he passed away, he, he can't you know, storm into this room and say, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah it's up to us to represent him. Um, why don't you try? Sure. And think, so, sorry, think, think tension. In, in my opinion, this is, this is incredibly dense, not just tense, but also dense music. Yeah, that it has an in, enormous amount of inner pain. It's not just, it is beautiful, it's gorgeous, but it's not just beautiful. It, it has an incredible intensity from within. Try. Good. How, how 
how did you decide not to vibrate A? Was there a decision? The problem is, I don't like it, but it's not about me liking or you yes liking. Uh, these notes sound inconsistent. A vibrated note next to completely white note, they are absolutely disjointed in, 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 the, in the way they sound. I would really infer if you vibrate, which I definitely would, I would, I would go for, look for continuous vibrato in this case. Let's try. This is, this is anywhere between piano and mezzo piano. I would love to, this is, you are on stage in front of a, a major force. Yes, at this, at this point, this is only the, the upper strings. Mm -hmm. But soon things are coming. Yeah. Uh, do, don't be afraid of it. You are, you, are, you, are, you are thinking you have to play sweet and expressive. You know it's dolce molto espressivo. Mm -hmm. we, we don't know if it's dolce molto or molto espressivo. It's another question. Uh, but it does not mean uh, piano. One does not exclude the other. Let's try again. Believe in the, in the sound here. Beautiful. Keep the sound. Don't let it go. Keep, keep the sound. All the way. Now you can release. Very good. What happened before, you played all of this absolutely on one level. There was no shape to the phrase all the way until you came to, to this, you, you started developing phrase only from here. The, uh, everything was absolutely flat, only because you kept your, your dynamics uh, at bay. I, I know it feels strange, I, I know it does, consider. Yeah. Moving on, uh, an imp I think it's an incredibly important subject which, which since it comes back a, a lot in, in this concerto, just to mention it. Triol, triplet, is the most uh, expressive rhythmical figure in romantic music. When it comes, every composer uses it very differently. Let's say if it was Schubert, Schubert uses triol to, to move the, 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 the line forward. Brahms always uses it in, the, in an opposing ma manner. He will opposite, oppose it to a duplet or, or quadruplet, yeah? Sibelius does the same. In this case, it is very clear, triol, it, the triplet is a, is a tension building uh, material. What you did here, you played, there was a long and two short notes. It immediately ah, releases the tension. Yeah, play this one, please. From, um, more now go. Now careful. One, two, three. One, two, three. No, you're stretching. You're stretching. Now you're stretching the eight notes. Very, this, this needs to be as precise as possible or we'll lose the tension. Once they, they do it again from... For my taste, this is highly unnecessary. We will do it in Sigourney Weizmann, not, not here. I, again, by, by, by doing this gesture, you are cutting the, uh, the, the, the line. Yep. There is a finality. Team, ba ba ba. Uh, moving on. Where did you make this ring for Sanders? Um, in the bow? No, no, no. Where, in what 
place in the in the score? Did you pay attention to them? Did you play them? Yeah, I think so. Let's do it again. <laughs> You were now actually paying attention as opposed to the first time. But be between the top C bemol and low do dies, which note was stronger? Uh, I think the low. Yeah. Uh, I think it's, it's, it's incorrect. And it, again, it's a, it's a, it is a tradition. We, we hear it. We just talked about tradition with, with, with Ronnie. Uh, we, we hear so many interpretations, and it, it inevitably it affects us. Tido. It's not tito. Yes, it is very comfortable to play it on the down bow, but the message becomes crooked. Yeah, and, and, and I do think again we lose energy. Moving on, another triol. Yeah, which which you played as a as a entrance into quartol. It was it did not have. We have a very clear two, three, four. Pa 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 pi pa 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 pam. Yeah, it's it's something that Brahms uses in, in, in his work. I, I do believe he, he he was a fan. I don't know I don't know if it, if it is true, but it sounds like he heard a lot of Brahms. Mm -hmm. uh, there are certain com compositional tools that he uses that are very very uh, uh, similar to, to, to Brahms's. It's written in a accelerando. You pushed the tempo. In effect, you cancelled it. Understand? Yeah. Uh, another subject. These gestures, and especially these gestures, the diminuendo, on uh, climax. This is uh, absolutely typical of, of Sibelius, and I do think it's, it's, in, it's extremely powerful. Uh, you've observed some of them. I don't know how you chose which ones were, were important, which ones were not. Uh, but this is, if you, if you ever, I'm sure you have heard Seagull. Yeah, there are cries. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, you, you walk on a, on a street in Helsinki. That if there is no not too much traffic, that's all you hear. Mm -hmm. Ah, ah, screams. Uh, Seagull in general is an incredibly popular uh, romantic symbol in the 19th, early 20th century. There, there are the theater plays uh, with that symbol. It, it, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's an image. Certainly, the, you, you listen to his symphonies, it, it, it's all over. I would reconsider. You, you know, you, you made a big splash, yeah. crescendo. I don't think that's, that's necessary. Um, thank you for not playing uh, Hora or Sirtaki or whatever. They were. <laughs> that didn't, didn't happen. I, I, I really was very happy. But you, played, you, you started piano. I don't think there is there is much to argue. Yeah. Uh, I want and I feel is wonderful and I with all my respect, but I think you owe him just as much respect as I owe you. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I would I, I I would not doubt it. Uh, I think the, the the point here is an incredible wall of inevitable energy mm -hmm. that smashes you into into this seventh chord. Yeah. yeah? Uh, it, it's it's not it's not a, 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 an exercise in crescendo, it's an exercise in impact. Let, 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 let's try. It. Do, do believe what he said. Start starts mezzo forte, maybe a little bit heavier bow, not heavier pay, but heavier bow. Go. Maybe uh, maybe a little bit closer to the frog, rather than. Eyes, eyes here, not here, but here. Go, go once, once again. Uh, I, I, I do understand what you're, what you're doing with, with shaping the phrase according to the melodic line. I wouldn't exaggerate. I need ra rather a rival than the way how we go up and down and up and down. I, I don't think it's, it's, this is the goal. Goal is there. 
Very good. If, if you would allow yourself not to stand on your toes, but to remain on your heels. Let's do it again. Make sure your weight is backwards, not, not, not front. Much better, much better. It's easier to play this way. You know? yeah. uh, this is tension. In, in, inevitably, the moment you stand on your toes, you do it. Yeah, it, it's difficult to hold yourself upright. Imagine that you are placing all your weight on your heels. It, 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 is, it is really very important. Going on. Um, I liked very much that you paid attention to tension and release. Mm -hmm. But like in, in this passage here, I feel it was overdone. You are, you are not letting me, you know what I'm talking about. Yes. It's wonderful that you are aware. Um, I am, I'm afraid that we're, we're not going to see the forest behind the trees. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are not seeing the overall structure. I, I did enjoy f two or three, and then I thought, oh, this is too much. This is, this, it becomes redundant. Uh, if, if you played for me E major prelude, I would be your friend forever. Uh, here, I'm, I'm not sure this is, this is, it's good that you know it. I wouldn't pay, pay, pay too much attention. What I do need you to, to think about is how you prepare the arrival back into tempo. Uh, you started, to my taste, much too, too fast. The result was that you were, and you were speeding up, as per composer's wishes. Mm -hmm. yeah. You became much too fast here, and the conductor inevitably will, if the conductor is even interested in what you're doing, which sometimes is not the case, but if he or she is interested, he will hear and then you're in trouble because it's way too fast. So you will have to pull down the whole orchestra with you on one beat. Do you think it's realistic? Yeah. No, it's absolutely, so this is a disaster written all over it. You need to be very calculative. This is almost a kind of a mathematical uh, progression. You need to be very certain that the tempo that you arrive by the end of this segment is the tempo that you want. Otherwise, it, it really becomes a, 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 a very shaky situation. I need to talk to you about second subject. Uh, did you like uh, Julia's tempo when she arrived? <laughs> It felt a little slow. Okay, very good. L let me demonstrate you something. Your reaction to too slow. It took you almost two bars to go through that bar. If this was too slow, let's say it was not, which I, I don't think it was too slow. Then it is actually recognizable through Sibelius language. This is as Sibelius as it, as it gets. It's almost as noticeable as pa 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 in for Beethoven. Uh, it's you, you clearly took tempo absolutely down. Or, or it is confusing, I, I, I will give you that. But uh, you are an intelligent man. You can, you can divide bar in half and, and go with that. It's not very difficult. Let's do it once again. Let, let's try to stay, stay in tempo and be aware that there are clarinets playing. Six. How many bits did you have in this bar? 
Did you count with me? Yeah, I, I It's shortened. No. You had you had uh, eight and a half or, or nine. Again, this is a YouTube moment to play. <laughs> Music, the mu musical material, the, 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 the theme of this, of this second subject is and this upbeat is no different than all others. It's just louder. What is the reason to play it? Mathematically twice longer. Besides uh, recordings, I don't know. Yeah? Tradition is fantastic as long as, as long as you give an explanation to it. If, if there is explanation of this sort, I will question it. Yeah, I, I just don't, don't see a reason why. Yeah, yes, we will take time, of course. Yes, we will breathe. Yes, we will create attention and it, and it will explode in, into downbeat. But by, by multiplying it by two, you don't create any tension. You actually erase it. Yeah, think. Um, Sorry. Okay. Once again, from from your from your Amazon. But it's not terrible. No. no. Uh, this this rhythmical figure, pam pa pam, is all over the place. Look at it. Every, almost every bar, or at least every two bars, he must be meaning something by it. Yeah. To pervert it in such way. Point taken. Going on. Uh, this is a very important moment. When we start. Um, <laughs> Tell me, where does he begin the rhythm of here? Mm -hmm. And when did you start the rhythm? Uh, right exactly. Perfect. Uh, again, another tradition, for which again I cannot find an explanation. He is writing incredibly clearly for us that he wants a diminished, sorry, diminished, uh, gradually diminished tension. And he clearly gives us forte affettuoso accents with even a little bit more of crescendo. Diminuendo to mezzo forte tenuto. Diminuendo to mezzo piano. Piano. Pianissimo. What did you do here? You were playing, but by this point, your heartbeat was one beat per two minutes. Uh, but but it, instead of pianissimo crescendo to mezzo piano, you did? Mezzo forte, diminuente to pianissimo. He's, uh, I think, being incredibly clear. You want to try? Go from here. <laughs> then, then less. And it's always connected to, to tam pa pam. And pay attention. The last one is also tim pa pa. You were playing this four times slower, which in, in, in effect canceled the, the amazing moment of this fermata. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is when, when, when uh, Dr. Faustus is asking the M M Mephisto to stop the time. It, 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 this is where your heart stops. Go, try and then we have to stop or, or else I will be punished. Forte, 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 forte. Every note. Tempo. Don't stop.
One. Tempo, tempo, two. No, do not slow down. Bam, bam, bam. And yes, it's, it's another tradition. We see this and we do this. This is, a, this is the tenuto part. He's actually, he's asking you to prolong the nose rather than, let's, let's take it from here. Imagine it, it's almost legato going all the way to the top. Mm -hmm. Go, and one. And stop. Wait. Too little, once again. Much longer per matter, have patience. Go to the frog and save. Hold, 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 go. Good. And now what does wait? Beautiful. Now what does he say here? I'm not going to show you. After fermata, there is a uh, indication in in Italian. What, what do you think? It's about tempo. Yeah, I should under. Oh, sorry. I... Poco a poco meno moderato. This is almost not about tempo. When we are in recapitulation before the coda, there he says it in gender. There we push the full tempo, meaning we do not start slow here. We are back to tempo. This momentary uh, uh, flash of, of, of fermata is over with the tempo. We become less modern. Of course, you will speed up a little. I'm, I'm not so, so stingy. But it, it has to be measured. You are starting in, in Largo and arriving at Allegro. For, for me, it is way, way too early. And it, it's not according to what he said. If you observe it, you'll be the first one to, to, to do it uh, according to Sibelius. Could be fun. You know, Urtext uh, uh, rendition. OK? Bravo.